Have you ever heard about the Christmas Miracle on Maple Street? It's not the movie Miracle on 34th Street. Christmas Miracle on Maple Street. Well, it all started with a couple, Emily and David. And this isn't the Emily we know now. This was before she became the unofficial mayor of Maple Street. Here's how it happened. A number of years ago, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, a moving truck shows up at the house down the street. Somebody new is moving in. And the following weekend, Emily and David are out for a walk, and their new neighbor is outside getting the mail, and they have a conversation. They meet Tom. It's a brief conversation, but find out your know, job relocation. He's an IT guy, same as David. Thanksgiving transition, so he didn't have to use any extra vacation days. Very interesting. A little reserved, maybe a little standoffish, vague, but Emily kind of gets the hunch that Tom is gearing up for a solo Christmas, which, you know, let's be honest, that can be tougher than trying to untangle last year's Christmas lights. Emily and David are feeling a little bit of that themselves. They're empty nesters and their only son, Matt, is on active duty with the Marines and deployed this year. But here's the kicker. Emily and David decide to invite Tom over for Christmas dinner. Just like that. Yeah, imagine the guts, right? It's like inviting a complete stranger to crash your family reunion. But Emily's got this sixth sense for kindness and maybe she's just nosy, but in the best possible way. So fast forward to Christmas and Tom shows up looking as awkward as a reindeer in a swimsuit. But as the night rolls on, you wouldn't believe the transformation. The guy is a hoot. He's cracking jokes, sharing wild stories from back home. And, and get this, he even does a mean impression of Will Ferrell in Elf. The room is buzzing like a beehive, full of laughter and chatter. And Emily and David, seeing how this whole thing turned Tom's holiday around, they have this light bulb moment. Like, why stop at Tom? So next year, Matt's back home on leave from the Marines, and, and Emily starts inviting more of those strangers uh, there's uh, Mrs. Johnson down the street, bakes cookies like a wizard. We probably all know uh, somebody like that, uh, or at least we should. Uh, it's kind of a, a lost art these days, maybe. Chris, a, a college student who's studying miles away from his family. And of course, Tom is back again, too. And each person brings a piece of their world to the table. But now here's where it gets really interesting. This little dinner tradition of Emily's starts growing. I mean, like a snowball rolling downhill. And before you know it, it's not just a dinner. It's the event of the season on Maple Street. So years go by and Emily and David keep inviting, keep hosting. And this hodgepodge of guests starts feeling like less random people and more like family. Relationships form. Friendships are forged. And life happens to different people in the group. Some come and go and... You know, good things happen, bad things happen, but they're there for each other, not just at Christmas time, but throughout the year, through thick and thin. It's like they've created their own holiday movie, but, you know, less drama and more pie. Both good things. So why do they call it the Christmas Miracle on Maple Street? Well, it turns out that Emily's kindness didn't just change their Christmases. It changed their lives. Different backgrounds, different stories, different circumstances. And this ragtag bunch found a place where they fit perfectly imperfect. And it's all because Emily simply decided to set a few extra plates on her table. And we we're having a conversation. I was like, you know, why? You know, what, what was the why behind that? And Emily and David both said, yeah, it's really, really simple. So, you know, it's a way to demonstrate the love of Jesus in a practical way. And what better way to honor the real meaning of Christmas? It's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Now, some people love the holidays and others just endure them. And a lot of people are somewhere in between. But wherever you are on that spectrum, you know, I think that there's a little bit of Emily in all of us, especially if you're a leader. And we can choose to focus inward or we can focus outward. You know, who do you know who could use a friend? Who do you see, but maybe you don't know? Kindness is free to give and priceless to receive. You know, I've been one of those strangers at the table, and sometimes the best gifts are the ones we don't expect sitting right next to us at the dinner table.